Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I, I want to say this right now. How was the audio out there? Was that tricky to hear? Awesome. awesome. Very good. Well done. Excellent playing. It was so good of you to come by. Uh, we're going to talk choices with you. Again, the same thing. Here you are. People are saying, oh, he's a, he's a big deal now. He's across Canada. But when you were in, in Lethbridge, mm -hmm. you pick up the guitar. You think, I'm just going to learn how to play this thing. A lot of people learn how to play the guitar in university. They have a couple of beer. They get halfway through American Pie, and they say, there, I'm done. I know all I need to know. Was there a point where you said, I actually think I want to make a living doing this? Well, I, was, I played guitar when I, was, uh, when I was in high school and junior high. Yeah. Like I played with like a, a band. And then I moved to Australia right out, of, right out of high school. And I started playing my mom's acoustic guitar. And then I took that with me to school. And then I just started writing more and more songs. And I decided that I wanted to not only play, but just play my own songs. And then did it fit right away? Or did it like, well, that's a good idea, but mm. No, I mean, I, I played like. Uh, I'd play like weekly shows where I played half covers, and then, and then eventually the venues just got better and better and better. And then it worked from there. Now, you got a story about um, leaving when you decided to leave university and go back to Calgary. And Brett, you tell a great story, uh, and I'm going to make you tell yours first. But a lot of us here come to moments in our life where we're making a choice. We're saying, okay, I could go this way or I could go that way. For you, one of your choices was starting your own business. And right. a lot of people in the, know that feeling from this room. You tell a story of a, a plane, a flight oh. Oh. from Calgary to Toronto. What's that story? Well, it ties to that conversation I had with you earlier about uh, entrepreneurs view risk differently. I was traveling to Toronto with a client. I was working for another firm was with the lead client of our firm, the one I was working with, and we were going to Toronto to meet with some institutions. And uh, the gentleman asked me if the guy I was working for had what it would take to build the business into a full service investment dealer. And I, I paused, because it wasn't in me to lie to the client, but I also had no enthusiasm for that thought. And uh, he looked at me and said, look, if you ever go on your own, I would hire you. And that single sentence, I, you know, I knew that my legal rights were very limited in terms of chasing business with an existing client. And I said, thank you very much, and left it at that. And, uh, but it was on the strength of that conversation that I went on to build Wilson Mackey, which then was the precursor to uh, a big part of what became First Energy. And it wasn't that he actually did hire me, but it was the fact that if he would hire me, someone else will hire me, and that was enough to get me off the ground. Now, friends of mine go, just a minute, that was enough to get you starting a business? Well, yeah. So again, my perception of risk, they look at me and go, I was nuts. I looked at it and said, it's a layup. And for you, your decision to say, OK, I could be going to university. And it's, I think it's kind of funny, because it's not like you're in a university program taking law, and you're almost a lawyer. You're in a university taking theater. Right. And you said, OK, I'm going to leave theater and go to a much more secure career <laughs> in <Yeah>. music. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, this theater thing is risky. <laughs> 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 but, so then was there, uh, was there a moment for you, though, where you did the same sort of thing, where you said, you know what, risky or not, I'm going to do it? Well, I, I tried to, um, like, I'd been planning that, that tour of Al Alberta with the U of L paying for it, and, um, which I'm very grateful for, by the way. And, uh, and I finished school, I guess, winter semester that year. And I took a semester off at first. Like, I told myself I was just taking a semester off. And my mom, of course, was very adamant that it was just a semester. And, uh, and the, the, in the summer, I applied to the University of Calgary, just taking kind of general credits. And I, and I got into the classes, and I got my books, and I, ma I made it through the entire two-week ad drop period. <laughs> and then the next day after that, I went in. I was like, uh, my computer, I couldn't, I couldn't access the internet. Uh, I couldn't get. And I managed, to, I managed to, without penalty, get rid of all the classes. And so basically, I. Basically, I say that I workshopped at the University of Calgary, <laughs> but I, I, I realized that I needed to commit to the decision. And so I tried to go back, and it just really didn't work that time. And when you said, OK, I'm committing, did it fit? Yeah, once, once I committed to the idea, I think once you commit to an idea, uh, it, you, it, you ha it has to start working. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and again, we're surrounded by a group of people who, who did that very thing. You guys remind me a little of each other in the sense that you go big, right? When you're going to release a CD, you say, well, I could go to a bar and do it with a buddy, or I could bring 120 people on stage and do it at the Jack. And you're sort of the same way. 
I'll start with you, Brett. Was big always part of your life? You know, size hasn't been the issue. I, I really, <laughs> <laughs> I argue that often with small hands. But um, the, um, I think it was more about providing a service that was needed. In the case, when I started Wilson Mackey, it was brokering oil and gas properties. It was a business that didn't exist, frankly, back in the early 90s. It hadn't been professionalized. It was just done by the staff of oil company to oil company. And I wanted to create a business within that. We had no idea that it would get as large as it did. Or, frankly, when First Energy got going, we had no idea. Size wasn't the issue. It was just quality of service was what we were chasing. For you, when you, you go big when you're doing these sorts of things, has that always sort of been part of your plan? Well, I, um, I've never been a believer with music uh, in, in, say, going and doing an open mic or, or going and, and um, I guess I, I, I wanted to kind of own it. Like I wanted to, so I would rather have my own night in a bar than be a part of someone else's night, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of always took that strategy and then and at first I was in bars and then, and then with the Jack Singer, I, I guess I convinced enough people to believe in it and let me do it. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. I mean, this, the show sold out. It was awesome. Well, I was there. It was a fun show. Yeah. Now, you, both of you guys come off as nice guys, I would think, right? I mean, give or take. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> Brad. But I do think that's part, of, that's part of, you're known as the friendly dragon, right? right? And, you're, and you're a guy that smiles and you're happy and you got a flower on your guitar. But you're in a business, <laughs> right? I mean, you are, and that means there's got to be times you say, this manager, not nah, that manager. Or you say, nice drummer, dump him, I need another drummer. Or this is a great direction, you know what, i got to shift. How do, you, how, do you, how do you get the tough guy in there? I, I, that's a hard part. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll start off by saying that the smiling and the flower, that's all, that's all kind of a facade, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like as soon as the cameras are off for this this it's avenue over. show of yours, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes it, it's uh, the reality is sometimes you have to move on. Some you know it's like uh, the, sometimes people, you know, at first it was working really well, and then someone's grown or something's changed, and you just have to, I guess, just kind of be as honest as possible and. You, do you lie in bed and I think I gotta fire the drummer? I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I, sometimes I, uh, unfortunately, do. I, I, I Houdini, you know, <laughs> where you're like one, you know, one minute you're present and then the next minute you just like kind of vanish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Brett, you, you've had obviously, you've lived longer and you've done a lot of businesses. Right. That is that a lot of business people will tell me, and I'm sure we'll get the same answer out here. Knowing when to fire somebody and actually firing somebody is some of the hardest things, especially as an entrepreneur when it's your company, there's only four of you in the company, is one of the hardest things to do. How do you do it? Well, it's almost a given that there's someone who's underperforming in, a, in an organization of any size. And it is the, by far the toughest thing to do. I still remember at First Energy when we fired our first, we had to conduct our first firing, there was four partners and three of us went in the room. Not, no one of us was willing to take on the task and <laughs> we were all just scared, and shaking almost. And, and, uh, and the woman that had to be let go, we put a severance package on the table that was probably five times what it had to be, <laughs> and she was delighted. And so, it kinda, you know, it didn't really like working for us anyway. So it, it, so it wasn't as bad. But the only other story about being tough, I remember when I was trying out for Dragon's Den, and they said, the only knock against you when I did my first tryout, they said, first of all, you look better on camera than you do in person. So that was, <laughs> apparently that's a good thing. And then the second part, though, was you're not mean enough. And I said, look, if you want me to be mean, i.e. in the Kevin O'Leary model, I'm not interested in playing this show. I'm just no interest. But if you don't think I know how to be tough when you need to be tough, you know, check with my ex-wife and her divorce lawyer. There's a time <laughs> and a place to put your foot down. But the reality is that um, being tough is probably, for me, the hardest part of business. Yeah, I, I would think so, just from knowing both you guys, that that would be a challenge. Talk about Dragon's Den, because I know you and I, I remember when you were trying out for it. Yeah. We were having a coffee years ago. Yeah. People think, well, he was on Dragon's Den, he's on Dragon's Den, because he's on Dragon's Den. But that actually took, that took work, and that wasn't something that came quickly. Well, I, got a, I had an email that I received that said, we'd like you to be the next dragon. So somewhat presumptuously, I thought I was going to be the next dragon. 
And it turned out I had to go to Toronto and try out. And again, I thought it was mine to lose. It turns out there was other people trying out at the same time. And I was a little, I was actually annoyed when I found out I was competing. <laughs> and then I uh, got a little more excited about it and sort of dug in a little deeper and put together my first electronic press kit, gathering some of the stuff that had been written. And I'd never looked at it that way that I had my own press kit, so to speak, and started to compete for it and ultimately sent them an email that said, uh, here's the top 10 reasons you should pick me. And, but I was one of the first two that tried out. And then they said, well, we want to go with Brett. Upper management said, just a minute, you tried out two? <laughs> That's it? And so they ended up testing another 60 people, narrowed it down to myself and one other person, and then it took them a month to make the decision between us. And um, I guess my email where I said, here's the reasons to pick me was yeah. apparently pivotal. You just got to remember that emails can be forwarded, and I said some things in that email I didn't mean to. But <laughs> well, I got you the gigs.